flycatchers. Over the first two parts of the series, we slowly but surely progressed in difficulty. While identifying the Great Kiskadee and its lookalikes can in most cases be a fairly simple exercise, the Myarchus flycatchers posed a slightly bigger challenge. Both are child's play in comparison to the group of tyrant flycatchers that we're tackling today, the Empidonax flycatchers. All the more reason for me to try and give it a shot. So let's begin. Before we get started, there are three terms that I'll be using in this video. I-ring, wing bars and primary projection. As the names suggest, I-ring refers to the line of very short, differently colored feathers around the bird's eye. And wing bars are the tips of the feathers that cover the base of the flight feathers, or, well, the bars on the wing. But what on earth is a primary projection? Well, the feathers on the wings of a bird are often referred to in three groups. The innermost feathers are the tertials. The middle part forms the secondaries, while the outer flight feathers are called primaries. Now when the bird folds its wings, the tertials end up on top, above the secondaries and the primaries are the ones at the bottom. If now, when a bird is perched like this, the primary feathers extend beyond the longest secondaries and tertials, we speak of a primary projection. And there you go, now you know. Alright, let's talk about identifying a bird as an empit, before you worry about which one it is. In contrast to other similar flycatchers, empids have no crest and their bill is relatively short and flat, not conical. The eastern and western wood peewees that occur in Costa Rica can appear similar at first glance, but observing their behavior can give you a good first clue. When hunting, these peewees like to return to the same perch that they start from, again and again, while empids are more dynamic and often continue on to a new perch. Additionally, empids have a shorter primary projection, a more distinct eye ring, and clearly visible and well-defined wing bars. So always check for these things when suspecting that a bird might be an empid. They will also come in handy when squintingly trying to identify the different species. Ready to cry? I know I am. So let's go. There are seven species of Empidonax flycatchers in Costa Rica, but thankfully only four and a half of them are fiendishly difficult. Let's work through the difficult ones at first, from small to large. Aptly named, the least flycatcher is the smallest of the bunch, and is also slightly greyer. Its eye ring is very obvious, and its bill is fairly short. Even in relation to its size, the least flycatcher also has the shortest primary projection among its peers, and its tail is slightly forked. The least flycatcher is a migrant and visits Costa Rica between October and April. It likes to stay in the lower levels of secondary forest and forest edges. Its call is a sharp The yellow-bellied flycatcher is only slightly larger, but also significantly easier to identify. Although easier is a relative term with empids. Its overall coloration is more olive than the others, and it has a dull yellowish throat. Its eye ring is even and circular. Like the least flycatcher, it's a winter visitor that visits Costa Rica from late August to late May. The yellow-bellied flycatcher often whistles a rising The white-throated flycatcher, in contrast, is a year-round resident in Costa Rica. This somewhat localized bird shows a very prominent white throat, contrasting with its brownish chest. The white lores are also more pronounced than in the other species. Overall, the bird is browner and its wing bars are ochre rather than grayish. Its primary projection is very short. The white-throated flycatcher is most common around the marshy bases of the Irasu volcano, where it forages from low exposed perches. Its call is a rising Alright, how are we feeling? Still doing okay, I hope, because now things are getting problematic. The Acadian flycatcher is another one of Costa Rica's winter visitors and is quite common in the lowlands up to middle elevations from late August until late May. It has a narrow eye ring and a wide bill with a yellowish underside and a dark upper side. Its upper parts are olive green, with a whitish throat that's contrasting with its more olive underparts. The most distinctive field mark is the very long primary projection. The Acadian flycatcher can be found in dense vegetation in the understory of forests, 
or at the forest edge. Its call is mostly loud. And finally, we have the alder and willow flycatchers. These two used to be the same species, and to be honest, they might as well still be. They're virtually indistinguishable by just looking at the birds alone. Both are passage migrants. They pass through Costa Rica from September to November, and then again from March to May, on their way from their breeding grounds in the US and Canada to their wintering grounds in South America. One of them, the willow flycatcher, is a rare winter resident. Supposedly, all the flycatchers don't stay, but let's be honest. Who knows? If you can successfully tell them apart by just looking at them, congratulations, you've completed birding. Both have an indistinct eye ring that helps distinguish them from the other impets. Brownish olive upper parts, a rather contrasting pale throat, and relatively short primary projections. For us mere mortals, their call is pretty much the only thing that separates the two. Slightly. For the sake of completeness, there are two other Empedonex flycatchers in Costa Rica, but these are far easier to identify. The yellowish flycatcher and the black-capped flycatcher. The small yellowish flycatcher does indeed have yellow underparts. In bad lighting it may possibly be confused with the yellow-bellied flycatcher, but note the uneven eye ring extending behind the eye. It's a year-round resident and inhabits middle elevation and highlands. Its call is The black-capped flycatcher is also aptly named. Its black crown and elliptical eye ring are diagnostic features. It's an endemic species, inhabiting the highlands of Costa Rica and western Panama, from 2,200 meters to above the temple line. Its call is a single Thanks for watching, and for now this concludes our flycatcher ID series. Next up are everyone's favorite birds. The hummingbirds. Sorry it took me so long to get around to these, but you'll soon see why. Let me end with a disclaimer. I'm far from being an expert and this series is us learning together. So if I'm making mistakes here and you know better, please let me and everybody else know in the comments. I would really appreciate it. Cheers.